Uh, I'm going to record now. Yeah. Hold on a sec, okay? Yeah. Ah, I like that CinemaScope thing. The movie theater. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take that. That's pretty cool. Who is that? Jude, get it right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in for us. This is our pop up podcast. Raptors after the game, doing our thing. I got me, the old heads, Jude Kelly, and of course, Michael Solomon, and my old head, John Sobel, all the way from the nation's capital. Ladies and gentlemen, I, mean, I know who your ladies, because I know who's transgender these days, but I want to say, gentlemen, if your ladies tell me, say hi. John? Hi. Michael? Is that what waiting for? <laughs> Michael? Hey, fellas, how's it going? Michael? Hey, fellas, how's it going? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. We okay. can. Jude Kelly. Hey, Jude. Yes. How's it going, everybody? Gentlemen, Fred Van Vliet, 37 mm. minutes, 54 points, three rebounds, two assists, three steals, three blocks. What the fuck is that guy up to tonight? He beat the record um, of Vince, um, Kyle, and DeRozan. Is, what? Can we make of Van Vliet's the fleet performance tonight? Jude, go ahead. Well, yes, I didn't know that that was a franchise record for points in a, a game, but great. Uh, certainly proves that he's worth every penny that we paid this offseason in the free agent market. Because I, I, Jude, not to cut you, but I'll cut you like a gelatin or, 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 or like that. I thought that we should have gone for him for like 15 million instead of like whatever he got. But you thought he, he you thought he merited the 20 million, 20 million plus? I think that was a bargain. Yeah, I think that was a bar bargain. He could have got a lot more going elsewhere, I thought. 20 million a season is pretty much bargain for a, you know, for a quality starter in the NBA these days. Of course, and Detroit would have paid like 50 million for him. Well, look at, look at Gordon Hayward. You think he's better than Gordon Hayward? He got, Gordon Hayward got he's, twice he's, as much. He's way better than Gordon Hayward. Yeah, Gordon Hayward got what? What do you get? Thirty-four million a year. So, what about crazy. his? What about Fred's performance tonight, though? Oh, outstanding. Yeah, I thought it was fabulous. I mean, don't forget this game here. We started up down eleven nothing. It was looking pretty dismal, and Freddie hit our first two buckets, which are both three pointers, kind of settled the team, and we coasted from there. Michael. Michael, you've played in these kind of games, right? What do you say to a teammate, Michael Solomon, what do you say to a teammate who broke records and you know he was going to break the record in the midst of it? What do you think of then of Fred Van Vliet, the Vliet, the Fleet performance tonight, Michael right. Solomon? Phenomenal performance. And I'll just keep on going to him. Van Vliet, he plays at his own speed. Mm -hmm. you know, he is never rushed. You know, he takes his time. He gets the screen. He comes off the screen. If you're too close, he'll walk you down to the basket, stretch his yes. hand up, and the ball up on you. You know, mm -hmm. he is, um, He's a cool cucumber, man. And I like what he's doing. I'm not surprised. But, you know, I've been worried about that dude for a while, though, in terms of when he goes into the trees. He goes into the trees and he dribbles around them and he goes back out. Because look, I'm six foot one. I lie about it. I'm six foot one and uh, one, six foot and a half, right? But I'm taller than Van Vliet and Lowry. And by mm -hmm. the way, Michael, that painting behind you, is that yours? Yes, it is. What is it called, brother? This is Block Party. What is it about? It's, it's homage to the old, um... Since George days, where we just have dog parties back in the um, back in the early eighties, late seventies. Stan Powell and all them kind of dudes. Yeah, yeah, mess. Saint George, we used to have these big block parties. I don't know if you remember, Clifton. Yeah, I do. Solid music pumping. Yeah. Forty-four Saint George down there, Blackos. Yeah. That's right. That's right. 
Wow. So Fred Van Vliet, back to Fred. So is this, of course, Fred is now the record breaker in terms of 54 points. Vince had 52. No, no, I think Vince or uh, uh, DeRozan had 52. And one of them had 51, I think Bosch. Yeah. But for a dude who's shorter than me, the dude is like five foot whatever. To get this accolade, what does this say for Fred Van Vliet in terms of the contract we signed with him? We, got, we signed a nice, we, we got off easy. <laughs> we got a, joking. got a deal, man. I think so. You know what I think about the contracts? I think it's it's so much goddamn money. What's the what? It, and it's not our money. What's the difference between a guy signing seventy seven million and, and eighty three and eighty seven, or between one hundred twenty six and one hundred forty two? As far as I'm concerned, it's just they're all wealthy beyond any imagining, and it's being paid for by Bell and Rogers, and you know to some extent by us, but mostly not directly by us. So. I don't really care about the money for all the conversations that always happen about it. You know, uh, I understand the salary cap comes into play and that's a factor and you got to use your money strategically. But as far as like whether a guy deserves it, as long as he leaves it on the floor and Freddie definitely does, as long yeah. as he, you know, he is balls to the wall and completely committed and he is. And on top of that, dude is a winner. You know, he really, he hits shot. He hits big shots, like you mentioned, June tonight. You're down eleven, nothing. He comes in and hits a couple of shots, and suddenly, you know, it's like thirteen eight, and then whatever. And it's like, oh, we're not getting killed. We're it's a game, and we're all good. And he does that all the time. He hits these big shots, daggers. Um, it's pretty. It's pretty amazing. When I think of those points he scored tonight. Mm -hmm to jump in and grab the microphone. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there's Terrence Ross. Didn't Terrence Ross hit 50 or close to 50? Um, he did get 50 a few seasons ago. You're right. Yeah. I love that guy. And in losing, in losing effort, and we yeah. lost that game. Charlie Villanueva, I think 48. Um, there's been some big scoring games. And, of course, Vince, probably the, the biggest one. And, uh, and DeRozan. Was did when DeRozan hit got that one? Was that the game against Detroit? Was that the same one? Who did who, who did he get it against? Anyone know? I don't remember. I don't know. Anyway, I almost feel like tonight, particularly like the efficiency, Freddie, like scoring on so many points on so few shots, and the the defense being the best defender on the court on top of being scoring fifty four points. Yeah. Uh, Dude's an all-around player. Uh, but the, the other thing about him, though, as far as I see, is he's, he's streaky as hell, right? Like he of course. Will really, he, mm -hmm. will, he will go three or four games where he can't hit the side of a brick wall, and then he'll do the step tonight where he hits like 10, in a, 10 threes in a row. It happened last year, of course, in the, no, two years ago in the playoffs when we did the title run, first couple series. I mean, you could say he had a reason because – you know, his kid's about to be born. He was distracted and everything. But as soon as Freddie Jr. got born, he hit like, like he couldn't miss. So he's a streaky guy. Yeah, and fire. that's sometimes hard when he's on a bad streak. It drives you crazy. But when he gets on a good one, it's magic. And of and course, I, Jude, Jude, yes, Kyle Lowry, to shift to Kyle, Kyle did um, 14 points, 10 rebounds, and 10 assists, a triple-double. And I've always thought, Jude, that Kyle is actually a triple-double player. Mm -hmm. So what it is is that they usually have him as mainly as a scorer rather than extending his range to a triple-doubler. He could be a 10-10-10 guy any given night, I think. What do you think of his I... triple-double tonight, and what do you think of his triple double ability going onwards well good point clifton yes i believe that kyle could get a triple double most nights and it's, in fact it's surprising that he doesn't get more of course i mean he can get his points he's uh one of the nba leaders in assists 
And his rebounds are generally, you know, seven, eight a game. So tonight when he got, you know, what is it, 14, 10, and 10? So yes. it was a, a solid, solid effort. One thing I would like to point out, too, I'm looking at the stats here. You know who the leader on the plus minus tonight was for the Raptors? No, I'm po- no. Aaron no. Baines. Aaron really? Baines, plus You're joking. 25. You're joking. You're fucking joking. joking. You're fucking joking. <laughs> Excuse Aaron me. Baines. You're fucking joking. Plus 25, even wow. though he went, uh, even though he only scored three, uh, four points. I, I believe Coach Nick looks at those plus minus stats, as do I. That's uh, that's impressive. Yeah. So you, you you think that Baines is really going to be, like I think, he's really going to be our X factor going to a lot of games. He's playing marginally better the last few games, but he's still... Double, double, double figures, double, double... double Double figures, double figures rebounds, right? Yeah. He's, He's been doing it. That. He's got to get but, that. Jude, though, let's stay on Lowry for a moment about the triple-double and move on from there. What about Lowry's triple-double? Because there's a lot of talk in Raptorland about trading Lowry to especially the 76ers, Philadelphia. Should we trade Lowry? Is Lowry is Lowry now on his last lap with the Lake with, 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 with the Raptors? Or are we gonna trade him for somebody? What do you think of Lowry's performance? What he contributes to the team? And is he really somebody we should be even thinking about trading? Well, CJ, I mean it's a business. So this is his last year under contract. If we don't trade him, then we risk letting him walk for nothing as a free agent so but if we trade him so 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 so, so hold on back. so hold on so you think we should trade him then we either trade him or we resign him for a two-year deal which is probably what he wants at what and i don't think they're gonna at, offer at 30 at 30 million a year or because that's what he's making he now 33 33 now he's gonna always so what yeah so, so i don't you think tell me gonna... we have to trade we have to get him for 33 million a year for two years 66 million for two years for 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 Kyle. They're not going to sign him for two years. They'll offer him a year like they did with Gasol and, and Ibaka for another 30 million. Two year deals. Another 30 million. Close to it anyway. No. Yeah. Not, not, not no, I think. I, yeah, I, I think they're going to let him. They're going to explore trade options. Philly would be a bad fit. I don't, I don't know how he'd work with Ben Simmons, two point guards out there, but we have to get some assets for Kyle Lowry or sign him for two years, but I don't think it's going to happen. Gentlemen, so let I me move into another we... region. And I'll start with Michael Chambers with this, right? Michael Salmon with this, right? Is that it's hard not to think sometimes that Masai can fuck up. Like, for instance, Allen that uh, the Nets gave away for free to the Cavaliers, the center. Why didn't we get involved in that deal? The Harden deal, right? Which meant that we could have gotten maybe that guy there. Then you say, okay, well, what do we got to do? Some people say, you know what? Maybe we should try for Bagdon in Sacramento and maybe Buddy Heal together in a, pa- a project. Uh, uh, Lanza Ball is available with um, my man, the three-pointer, right? What do we do now? Like, what do we need, basically? Michael Chambers, Michael, sorry, I call you. I don't Michael, like you know what? Bro. Because you are a, a visual artist and Michael Chambers is a visual artist. But right. Michael, who can we trade for? And what do you think is the trade availability for people? And what do we need going forward? Yeah, it'd, be it'd be good to get a big guard. Like who? Like um, Philadelphia's big guard. Like who? Simmons? Yeah, Simmons, Ben Simmons. Oh, come on, that's not going to happen. Come on, brother, that's not going to happen. That's what, that's what I would like to happen. That would be yeah, fantastic. but hey, come on, pipe dream, if you will. That's not going to happen. 
But, yeah, but hang on a second. Hey, these so, things happen, you know. These things do happen. When you look at the trades that's, cook, that's occurred this year, look at the trades that happened. Look, well, who, who would you who would you get for, who would you rep for Simmons? Siakam. No, Lowry. Lowry, Lowry, Lowry would, would be the obvious guy because Simmons would, and would, don't fit. So I would Simmons. I would get rid of Simmons, um, Siakam, and um, Lowry for Simmons. Hmm. All right, John John Sobel. So you're saying. We should give up. Um, we should give up Lowry. I'm not even saying we should. Uh, well, who know, should we give up if we deal with Philadelphia first? No, if you're going to make a deal, it, it, at the very least, it's got to be Lowry. And there's a logic there, I think, because Sim Simmons and Embiid don't fit. I don't think they're going to win the title together. I don't think so either. So, no. but Lowry and Embiid. Could make a move. They could make a move. You, know, really. you got to give up more than Lowry to get Simmons. I don't think you probably have. I don't think personally. I don't think Lowry. I think Lowry and Siakam is too much. But it might be like Lowry and, uh, and Powell plus uh, some stuff. Some 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 other. It could, we've got a lot of players. We mm -hmm. you know. So I don't even love Simmons. I think the fact he can't shoot is a real problem. On the other hand, he's a hell of a player, and he's he's great on the fast break. He's a great defender. Uh, he can distribute the ball. All stuff that we need. Mm -hmm. And um, we got shooters on the team already. It would be and, – and so as far as should we, though, I think – I don't know if Kyle's going to want to stay. I don't know if we can really be a contender next year. I think Masai is going to make some kind of moves. I don't know what they are. But I, it wouldn't shock me if he traded Lowry. And I could see the logic, even though – I, I love having him on our team, but I could see that he might be, he might want to go and it might be best for the team to trade him. So it wouldn't shock me and I wouldn't be heartbroken as long as we sent him, as long as it was a good deal, which I believe Masai only makes generally good deals. He's not going to get screwed. Um, I hope that other teams realize how good Lowry is, you know, how good he is at both ends and, and how much value he brings. I, I think they know. I think no. Jude though, Jude, what would you consider in this prognostication of the Raptors, right? Who would you trade and what you look for? For instance, I think all we need really is a big backup center. You know what? I would even take Javid McGlee from um, the Cavaliers. Jude, what do you think? I've always liked Javon McGee, although I think he's a little long in the tooth now. I don't know, CJ. I mean, I'm of not the general manager. Jude, you are long in the tooth, too. <laughs> I, I, don't know, uh, I don't know what the contract for all these uh, players you're talking about. But you know what? One team I see Kyle going to that uh, would be a real game changer would be potentially Milwaukee. I think Kyle wow. going to Milwaukee. That would be explosive. Would, be, would put them as a legitimate, uh, you know, one, two. Who, who, with, who, who would we get, though? Who would the Raptors get, though, from Milwaukee? Well, I think at this point, Milwaukee's well, not going to give up any real assets. Well, we have to set up for some draft picks. Yeah. And some Look, forget draft picks. You know what? I don't think draft picks really count as they used to, tell you the truth. Because you get a draft pick, it'll be number 29. Well, I, I don't know. I haven't studied it, but... If most first, got a, uh, most first draft picks go in the 20s, except it's like a real crucial groove. Yeah. I don't know who's coming up next year. It's been an off year. But but but, but, but I, tell I, me I, though, Jude, who who of the centers out there that you say that the Raptors could get at least to get a big bruiser as a center to supplant what we have right now? You know. I'll take you over There's... the bruiser. Go ahead, Michael, Michael, Michael. I don't think you need a bruiser as such. You need some big guys. Um, I think JaVale McGee would be a good guy to get. Because Raptors are a team in transition right now. Of course. You Though they won't say that. It, you know what? The Raptors never say when they like repositioning. Listen, once Ibaka left, that was like, Okay, we're, we're, we're no, no, it wasn't team. even back. I thought that, for instance, to tell you the truth, is that I, I, I could have left with Ibaka, but I thought that when we let go um, Gasal, 
because Gasol could be there in the backcourt making things right, making everybody know where they got to go and so on. And that is what I think is the big move that Messiah name made, which was ridiculous, is that let go Gasol. Really? I, I was happy what it is is that, Gasol. for instance, um, Boucher has been doing as much as what Ibaka would do. Points, rebounds, blocks, etc. He's right there, I think. All we're missing is what Gasol and his IQ, his basketball IQ will do. We need a basketball IQ center. Is what I think, gentlemen, Michael, Jude, John. Hey, John. Jude. Basketball IQ center, I mean, a lot of these young centers are, are pretty smart. I mean, the game is a new kind of game now. Basketball has changed so drastically. Getting rid of Gasol was a good move for us because he could only do such limited things. We don't have enough other great players around to, um, like, uh, Los Angeles picked up Gasol, right? Because mm -hmm. they need him to be the, that passer from the high post. Big yes. man pass. That's fine. Good luck right? with them. And he's, not, he's not having a great year out there. Good luck with them there. and that. They're not, they're not loving him out there as far as I've been able to tell. He, exactly, John. You're right. Go ahead, brother. Well, I miss I miss Ibaka more than uh, the Gasol. You're joking. The difference, joking. Between, Ibaka, joking. The difference between Ibaka and Boucher is Ibaka was really consistent the last couple of years. I mean, you, he, he would he was the best mid range shooter on the team. Just yep. steady, steady. He hit those shots. Uh, end of the clock. He, you know, now we we hunt for threes. Are it's crazy the amount of threes we're taking. Uh, but we don't have any, I think maybe Norm, a couple of guys can hit the, the, the kind of 16 footer, but Ibaka was great at that. And he was solid on defense. I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I miss him more. Um, but, you know, I think that it's true. We're at a transition point. It clearly, and Masai has got to make some choices, whether he thinks he can just keep tweaking and actually legitimately build up the young guys and make us into a contender, whether he's going to make some big moves. I think he's going to make some kind of big move myself. I, I can't claim no one. I, I believe so, John. I believe so. And, and Jude, I want to get to you. Hey, Jude. Like, for instance, three cats have gone to me and got into my heart. Watanabe, mm -hmm. baby. Utah Watanabe. Mm -hmm. um, Stanley Johnson, the Stanley man. And who else? I've been able to. Hey. Watson even have come out. Yeah. Is it yep. the coach? Yeah. The coach, yeah. Nick, Nick Nurse, Night Nurse Nick, is the coach fucking up and not just doing his job and using his bench and get them out there? We see he has been in desperation modes going to some of them. There was one time, for instance, where Yutanabe, um, it's about five guys were on the team, uh, on the floor, and none of them started. Watanabe, Stanley Johnson, um, Watson, Watana you name it. Jude, what about the coach? Well, Is the coach that, 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 just getting so conservative that, yeah, that, that he, he's forgotten about what, what got him there? No. I think so. You know what? Last year in the playoffs, I was really disappointed at Coach uh, Nick Nurse's uh, rotations, especially in that uh, uh, Boston series. He seemed to have forgot about his bench. He was shortening his lineup up. This year, he's, uh, his rotations are are odd. I mean, uh, this Malachi Flynn, I think, needs Quite. to see more time. He looked good in the preseason. Yes. I don't know what's what. I don't know what Matt Matt Thomas has done to upset him. And even uh, those Terrence are two Davis guys I would like is, to see more. I'd like to see more of them as well, you know. But he's the coach, so. But 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 he, Jude Jude Jude, they're, they're, what's your what's your Trenton criticism of the coach? Because I have some. Because he's become like assistant coach nurse now, like I used to call assistant coach Casey. He's given up. I don't know. I think to work. Yeah. He's actually got a different philosophy this year, Coach uh, Nick Nurse. 
What is that I mean, philosophy? Is, is, what what is this new philosophy? I don't know. It's almost like he's rolling the dice. He's playing crops. He's he's not trusting guys to play heavy minutes for him, especially guys who who were salted last year. I mean, with Watson, I don't know what Watson did last year. He was he was great. He made the all rookie team. This year he's playing very little. And when he does play, Coach Nick Nurse has gives him a, a short hook, which is not doing anything for his confidence. So I think I think Watson may be a guy, sadly, who probably needs a change of scenery, uh, just like uh, uh, Siakam. I, 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 I'm sorry, I wouldn't like to lose Watson because that guy is a gig. And here's a problem the Raptors have had is they've had an embarrassment of riches, which the coaches, generally speaking, have not been able to deal with. Michael Solomon, for instance, of Watanabe, um, Stanley Johnson, Bembry. Um, um, the three-point shooter. Like, why isn't Nurse playing those people more regularly? Michael Solomon. But, you know, with this, the, this quick start of the NBA season and the way the Raptors were decimated by people leaving, we are still, I think Nurse is still start searching for players. He's searching for players who can... Um, that's why he's playing so many, many players. He doesn't know who he's going to be using yet. He's still looking at his team. He has not settled, and it's going to be a while before he settles. You know, Mike. I think um, Sergi Baca, Baca left because he was. I think Serge was, was disrespected last year, especially in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. you know, of course, he was the bench for too long when he's the arguably the best three point shooter we had. Last year, he's very consistent. Look how consistent he still is with um, the Clippers. You know, the, um, Nurse did well when Kawhi was there. And if it wasn't for Kawhi, he wouldn't have gotten Coach of the Year. That's Dig. my belief. Dig. And what I saw last year um, made me confirms that for me. I, mean, I don't like the way he does his rotations. He doesn't. Not me. Not me. me. He doesn't seem to trust in his players. Dig, he answer. doesn't. He doesn't. J John Sobel, John Sobel, for instance, John Sobel, Watanabe. I love to lay that. Hell of a player. He's off my, Watanabe, Watanabe, Stanley okay. Johnson, and um, um, Bembry. So, right. you know, I, what, I agree what, with you guys. What, I agree with you guys. What about the coach that he hasn't, he's not using? the people he have that he could use. I, I would like to see Matt Thomas get minutes. I, I, I'm with you guys in general with the critiques and I think he's become more conservative and he's not playing the bench guys as much, I agree. But I will say this to, to just play devil's advocate. I, so are you a devil? I am a devil and I'm a devil's advocate. Are you a, are you a, white, are you a white devil? <laughs> it would seem so, a blue, <laughs> a blue sky devil. Uh, so, so I would say that he doesn't give his players what they want. He would say he gives them what they need, right? And you look at someone like Stanley Johnson or Chris Boucher, who are still working to get on the floor, but are being rewarded and their play has improved from what it was. Absolutely. And, and, you know, so... I'd love to see Matt Thomas get more minutes. Watson looks great. What, Nobby, what can you say? I mean, he, he looks great at both ends. Um, so I would like to see him to get more minutes too, but I think that, that he's so focused on defense. If you can't, if you can't do, execute the defensive schemes, he doesn't care if you're going to hit 10 threes. You're not going to keep John, cool. John, why does he have uh, Terrence Davis in there? Because he is – bomb on defense so if you talk about defense yeah, i agree well he's you know i don't know the answer to that uh maybe uh i don't know why jude, uh, maybe, jude let me get to you. maybe they want to trade him who knows jude let me get to you jude what's your criticism of the coach night nurse dick well i just uh i agree with john he's been become really conservative in his uh uh, rotations off the bench guys have a quick hook and they don't have any consistency with whether they're going to play 
from game in and game out. So it's, it's really tough to build trust and continuity amongst the players out there if, if you have a different lineup out there every night. So I would like to see Nick Nurse get back to a, a, a solid eight to nine man rotation and give the guys the, t- the quality times they need to develop. Matt, Matthew, Matt Thomas, I, he was playing great, shooting well. Yeah. Malachi Flynn, you know, he may need some, he, need, he definitely needs some more touches and some more time out there to, to develop. Um, Michael Solomon. Matt, 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 Matt Thomas, I think he's not getting a run these days. He's Why? 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 Why is he, he not getting a play? He, he, he has a hard time to create his own shot. He, he yeah. needs to be set up for his three-pointer. He can't set himself up for that shot, it seems. Yeah, well, well, why don't you make a play for him, him, right? Yeah. You, you, need, you need to have more, um, more passers on the team, more people who can really yeah. pass the ball. In that situation, Matt Thomas is effective. But without several good passes on the floor, He's ineffective because he well, hold on. Who is, who is not the best passer on the floor? If they make the pass game, they've shown they can do it. So, for instance, let me move on from that though. For instance, go on to the next games. They got the Raptors got the Nets, the Hawks, the Hawks, the Grizzlies, the Wizards, the Celtics, the Timber, Timberwolves, the Bucks and the Bucks and the Timberwolves in the next couple of games. What do you all combatulate for the Raps winning in the next seven games? Mind you, we're, we're at eight and 12. We're four, four, one, two, three, four below 500. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to be four more below 500 pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got to do to get at least to 500, John? Uh, don't ask me, man. I don't know. Uh, I mean, we have a good team. I don't know how good we are. I don't think we're good. I don't think we're, uh, there's a lot of better teams in the league right now than us. When we're playing our best, we can play with anyone. But can we can we really match? I don't know. I don't have an answer. I Jude, Jude, the size got to make the. He's got to be the savior. I think he can do it. Jude Kelly, can you be more a little bit less mama mouthed than John? Probably not. I, uh, <laughs> we're we're only we're only one game out of a playoff spot, so let's look on the bright side. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, it's a it's a tough tough stretch coming up. I uh, don't see us. Beating uh, Milwaukee twice, I don't see us beating uh, Brooklyn. And then we have uh, Philadelphia coming up toward the end of the month twice. Mm-hmm. Miami, a little hurt. Houston, it's a kind of a tough stretch. Great. We'll be lucky to go 500 for the rest of the way. You know, Michael, I, I Michael Solomon, go ahead, John. Just want to say, if Norm can hit 20 points a night, that'll make a huge difference. Like he's been doing that. If he, if he can come in and be a 20 point guy on the wing, we haven't had that well since Theroux, and really, that would be good. That would make it. That would be a big help. Michael, Michael Sama, are you, uh, are you um, giving it up now? Or are you?